Okay. Uh, six point four. Uh, this is gonna be inverses and right triangles. Right. Inverses and right triangles. So let's just start with some basic stuff to review. If I want to know um, the arc cosine of one half, what does that mean? So this is a review here. Arc cosine of one half. It means where is x equal to one half? So like on your unit circle, where is x positive one half? So if you take a look at your unit circle, uh, one half for x is about right here. So we're talking about those two positions. Okay. So it's the short leg. One half is the short leg version. So what are the two possibilities for one half? What would be this angle? That's the short leg, this must be the long leg, so that is how many degrees? 60, which is what in pi? Pi over 3. So this answer is pi over 3, okay? So you have 60 degrees here. You also have this version here. The problem is the inverse of cosine only goes from 0 to pi, if you remember. So you couldn't use this one. Now it has everything to do if you graph your inverse of cosine. Um, it's only a one-to-one -one function um, from zero to 180 degrees. Um, and then it repeats over itself. So that's how they come up with the, those parameters. We're not talking about that. I'm just saying you need to remember that. The arc cosine only goes from zero to 180, all right? All right, so that's what this is, the, this section. So uh, if example two, let's do uh, the arc sine of, let's do uh, one half for this one. So this is saying, let's do negative one half, negative one half. All right, so now the sine represents your y value. So where is the y value negative one half? And arc sine only goes from zero to pi over two and zero to negative pi over two. So in those two quadrants, y is only negative in that fourth quadrant. But you can't use fourth quadrant values. You have to act like you're going backwards, uh, like the first quadrant values, like 0 to negative 90. All right, you don't want to tell me that's 330 degrees, because that you can't get there uh, with the arc sign. You have to get to negative 30 degrees to, to get to that 330 degree spot. All right, so those are your parameters. So where is y? Negative 1 half. y is the short leg, so um, that'd be right there. Uh, so x is the long leg, short leg, long leg. So what is that going this direction in terms of pi? 30 degrees, which is pi, negative pi over 6 would be your answer for this. All right, so again, that is review, and then we can do a, a more difficult one. Tangents are always difficult. Arc tangents are always difficult because we're dealing with y and x at the same, at the same time. So if I said the uh, arc tangent of negative square root of 3, uh, this is difficult. Um, and if we're dealing with uh, exact values, meaning we're using our unit circle functions uh, values, or we have to draw a right triangle like what we've been doing before, which you have to do today. I'll get to that in a minute. But if I, um, I notice the square root of 3 is not the square root of 3 over 2, but you must think of this like this, y over x, and if I'm using... 1 half and square root of 3 over 2, I can get the square root of 3. And that's how you have to think of this. And that will give me the square root of 3. If I said the square root of 3 over 3, 
like the arctangent. Uh, there's only so many examples of these you can do. So uh, if I said the square root of three over three, then that came from one half over the square root of three over two, right? Because that's one over the square root of three, and then you rationalize it. And when you rationalize it, it ends up being the square root of three over three. So those are two different types of values you should kind of pay attention to that you can convert back into y over x. You need to. You need to make sure you remember those, okay? Um, all right, so now this is negative, and the arc tangent, again, is just like the arc sine. It goes from 0 to pi over 2 and 0 to negative pi over 2. So where is the tangent going to be negative? In the fourth quadrant, right? So that means y is negative in the fourth quadrant. So that's what we're talking about. So square root of 3 over 2 is your long leg, 1 half is your short leg. So x is the short leg, y is the long leg. So we are right here. So now the question is, what is that value in terms of pi on your unit circle? How many degrees, if that helps? It's either 30, 45, or 60, or 90. Which one is it? How many degrees? 30, 45, or 60, or 90? Yeah, that's right here. 60. Okay, so negative 60, which is what in pi? Negative pi over 3. So that's that answer. Negative pi over 3. And that's how we start off in 6.4. This is supposed to be the easy part. <laughs> All right, so you just need a little uh, refresher. So let's go on. And now we're going to grab our calculator. We get to do uh, quite a few calculator problems here. Um, example four. Uh, the arc cosine of negative point two. All right, so you can, rem you can memorize what to do, or you can try to understand this. So let me give you a little explanation or just memorize what to do. Now this says it wants it in radians. It tells you in the instructions it wants it as radians. So if that's what it says, make sure your calculator is in radians, all right? Because it does matter. It's like, do I want to know the radian measure, measurement or do I want to know the degrees? If I'm wanting degrees, then I better have my calculator in degree mode. So the instructions on this problem, they say, hey, put your calculator in radian mode, okay. So let me give you an example of what I'm, what I'm talking about, what I want. If my radius is one, this is your unit circle, and I'm at 120 degrees, all right? Well, 120 degrees is degrees. My radian measurement, 1.57 is 90 degrees, like pi is gonna be 3.14, so half of that's 1.57. Radian measurement, pi over two is 1.57, so this is close to two, you know, 1.7 or something like that. I don't know what 120 degrees is, but that's what we did on our quiz. Take 120 times pi over 180, and that'll change it to radian measurement. My point is, as the radius changes, and I get a bigger and bigger radius, my radian measurement, isn't it getting bigger and bigger? I mean, this radian measurement here is not the same as this one. Okay, yes. May I have Yeah. I think it's in radian already. Um, so, I'm trying to give you an understanding of why it's important that we understand radians versus just degrees. Degrees can't tell you your distance along the arc. That's why we have an arc formula, okay? S equals R times theta. All right, so I'm just putting this here to make sure you understand there's a reason why we need radians, because the degrees can't give you your length depending on what your, your uh, 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 radius is, okay? All right, now if the radius is one, then it's your basic 
pi values. All right, so now let's go ahead and do this, and I want to show you something. So the arc cosine on your calculator of negative 0.2, what this is saying is where is x, what is this value when x is negative 0.2? That's what that's saying. So think about this. It's just like what we did over here for the x and y values. All right, so everybody watch. Let me erase this and start give you a cleaner version here. So we're going to do another unit circle here. All right, and this value is one zero. Does everybody agree with that on the unit circle? That's one zero. Okay, and this up here is zero one. Now, I don't have to show you this. I can just say, hey, just pull out your calculator and figure out what the values are. That doesn't teach you anything. All right, so it's okay. Just pay attention. Uh, if you learn something, great. What? Anybody else? No. No good. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So when I put the arc cosine of negative 0.2 in, I get uh, 1.77. So that's radians, which is what we had over here. We got negative pi over three for that arc tangent. That's that's radians, but it's in pi uh, values. Okay. So what is that? Well, remember what I said just sec a second ago. This over here is 3.14. This is 1.57 when x is negative 0.2. Again, this is negative 1, 0, so 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 1. So negative 0.2 is about right there. Negative 0.2. All right, so if I go up to right here, that x value is negative 0.2. I don't know what the y value is, but I just wanted to show you that 1.77 is the radian measurement. 1.57 all the way over that little extra part will get us to 1.77. So I saw a lot of things on the quiz where you found the length of the arc to be like 2,520 when your radius was only like four units long. That doesn't make any sense. If this was four inches, and it was about, so it was something like this. Four inches here, that's four. It's gonna be almost eight inches to get to that spot if that was a four right here. And I get values like 2,520 inches. That doesn't make any sense. So I'm showing you this to try to get you to understand that the numbers need to make sense in your brain so that you know you're making a huge mistake if you have some weird number. Okay, so when I want radians, that's giving me this information. All right, so make sure if you're wanting radians, you're in radians in your, on your calculator. But in the instructions, it tells you to do that. All right, let's move on. Let's do another problem. Example five. Um, now we're solving again. Again, this is all review so far. Uh, seven, 18, and theta. I wanna know what theta is in degrees. So since I want degrees, I need to make sure I am in degrees on my calculator. Okay, so this goes back to solving that your right triangles. This is the exact same problem we just got done doing on, on the quiz. I'm at this corner and I'm given that side and this side. So what are those called in Sokotoa? You know, so Katona only works in right triangles for right now. So what would you use if you're at this corner and you have those two sides? Tangent, because that's the opposite side and that's the adjacent side. O and A is Toa. So the tangent of that angle equals the opposite over adjacent. Again, this is review. Except, how do I get that value? How do I get theta? By taking the inverse of the, uh, of the other side. So now I'm wanting degrees. I use my calculator. That's not a normal um, uh, you know, circle value. So take the arc tangent of seven divided by 18. And round to the tenths or whatever they tell you to round to in your, in your book, okay? So 21.3 degrees. Are you radians or degrees? Mm -hmm. 
It's a, you, you're wanting degrees, so you should be in degrees. Uh, the DRG right next to your second button. Yep. Let me know if you didn't get that. <clears throat> okay. Um, let's go ahead and do another problem. We're going to continue with this uh, lesson tomorrow, uh, but you want to get as much of this done today as you can. Okay, um, again, so far, just review. You may have struggled with it before, but just uh, try to keep up uh, and get better at it as we go. Now, I alluded to this just a little bit ago. I want all the possible angles, this is example six, all the possible angles for the cosine of theta to be three-fourths. Now, I want the answer, the book is telling you this in the instructions on purpose. There's infinitely many degrees you can give because you can just keep going around the circle until you hit x to be three-fourths, x to be three-fourths, x to be three-fourths, okay? So visually, this is what it's saying. Again, that's one zero, so if x is 0.75, we're about right here. So where's x positive 0.75 on the circle? Well, it's either there or there. So now the question is, what is that degree? And what is this degree? We could go all the way around and hit this, okay? And that'd be a very large degree. And what could I do? I could go around again, 360 plus whatever that is. And again, and again, there's infinitely many answers here. So the book limits you and says, hey, I only want to know all the possibilities between 0 and 180 degrees, which doesn't have anything to do with the arc cosine. They're just limiting what your answer can be. So some of these answers, you will have two answers, and some of them you only have one. For this one, for x to be positive 0.75, if we're only in this area, then I only have one possibility. Does everybody understand that? I'll do one where we have two here in a second. Because if I go this direction, here x would be negative 3 fourths. Okay, that's your x value of negative 3 fourths there. So I'm only going this way if I'm wanting the y values to be the same. So x values, positive 3 fourths is right there. That's your x coordinate. That's your x coordinate. They're still positive but I don't want this one because it only wants from zero to 180 in the instructions. So you read your instructions, okay? All right, so it says when X is three fourths, I go to three fourths, that's where it's gonna be between zero and 180. So now I gotta figure out what that degree is. How do you do that? Again, you don't have to know any of this stuff. You can just say, oh, well, that's just the arc cosine of three fourths. And you put that in your calculator and you're gonna get the right answer. Okay, arc cosine, that's right. arc cosine is uh, 41.4 degrees. Okay. If I wanted this one, this is still 41.4 degrees this way. 41.4 is just a reference angle, okay? I will do another one here in a second. Let's do one, uh, let's just see if we can figure this one out. This would be uh, example seven. Again, you don't have to know what I'm talking about up here. It does help. You just put it in your calculator and you get the right answer. But you may miss some points if you don't know what I'm talking about. The sine of theta is equal to four fifths. Okay. There are two answers here. Here's why. Where is the y value positive? In the first quadrant and the second quadrant, the y value is positive. Okay, again, we're talking about y's. Y goes all the way up to one. So this is 0 0.8, 4 fifths is 0 0.8. So 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 
All right, so here's about point eight. So where am I on this circle where the y value is four, positive four fifths? Right there and right there. Okay. So you have two places where the y value is gonna be four fifths. Now, how do we figure out what those values are? Well, let's plug it in your calculator. Theta is the arc sine of four fifths. But your calculator is only gonna give you one answer. Arc sine of four fifths. So 53.1 degree and you miss half the point because that only gave me this value right here. This is a reference angle, which it should be the same over here. Aren't these symmetric? Yeah. So this is 53.1. So how do I get from here to there? How do I get that measurement? What math are we doing? What do we gotta do? Yeah, 180 minus this reference will get me from here to there. So 180 minus 53.1, 126.9. Yes? Okay. So read your instructions because, again, there's infinitely many answers you can give for all of this stuff, and I'm, I'm hinting at what's coming. Got to be a... We're gonna to get to the point where you have to explain the infinite part of, a, of an answer, um, but not yet. <clears throat> All right, let's go over here. Okay, next example, example eight is the cosine of the arc tangent of four thirds. Okay, now four thirds is not a unit circle value. You can't put the square root of three over two over one half or any other combination like that to get you to four thirds. So when that happens, you're gonna to have to draw a triangle like what we did on the quiz. So number one, the arc tangent is between zero and pi over two and zero and negative pi over two, okay? Tangent's positive. This is positive. So where are we? Which quadrant are we in? The first quadrant. Tangent's positive in the first and third quadrants. Okay, so we are here. So what you should do is draw a triangle up to a point on the circle. Your hypotenuse is your radius. And tangent is the same thing as y over x. All right, so y is four and x is three. See over that. Not want to move. Okay. All right. So what's the radius? Who's figured out how to do that real quickly? Now, at some point in time, you're going to have to use the quadratic formula, or Pythagorean theorem: a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay. And yes, you'll have to do it on your homework. This one's a Pythagorean triple: three, four, five. If you didn't know that, then you do three squared plus four squared equals r squared. Okay, so why did I do that? Because I want the cosine at this value. And what's cosine? Cosine is your x, but remember, it's only x on the unit circle. Real quickly, review, review. When this is one, the radius is one. If I'm up here like this, that's one. And the cosine of theta is the adjacent leg over hypotenuse. So anything over one is itself, right? So it's just the adjacent leg. That's why on the unit circle, the cosine is one, or <laughs> the cosine is x. 
but your radius is not one here. So you still have to think of cosine as being adjacent over hypotenuse. Your hypotenuse is no longer one here. So the second you, cho you change your radius, you gotta be thinking of cosines and sines as, as Sokotoa. So the answer to this question is three fifths adjacent over hypotenuse. It's just saying, hey, what's the cosine when I know the arctangent is fourth of, two, of four thirds? When I'm using that to figure it out, that's all. It tells you what quadrant you're in, and then you gotta figure out the other values. You lost? No, okay, just thinking, okay. Um, if we have time, I can come back and do another one of these. That's probably one of the harder ones uh, where you have to draw a triangle. Sorry, whoever's watching these. Last, go, last example. Huh? I might go back and watch it just for that. <laughs> uh, this is example nine. Wow, I've got a lot of examples today. And again, I can go back and do another, uh, another one if you wanted that one. Let's, this one's a little bit harder. But how you solve this is identical to what we just did. Okay, so we're, what we're doing is we're gonna be doing the exact same thing as we did on that problem, but not with numbers, we're gonna use letters. So you have to understand the process to be able to do this, okay? All right, so let's give you another one. Um, the sign, oh, we're gonna use arctangent again, arctangent of x. I'm leaving it as x, it, this x is not the same thing as x, y in your coordinate. And I'd like to change it to a different letter, but in the book they use x on all of them, uh, x and y, depending on what, it, what it is they're doing. So I need you to separate this x from the x, y coordinate, okay? All right, so think about what the process is here. What did we do over here on this example? You first, you have the arc tangent. So again, we are between zero and pi over two and zero and negative pi over two. This doesn't say negative x, so we are to assume that this is positive. So we must be in the first quadrant again. Just like that was positive four thirds, this is positive some value. Think of this as some value. All right, so I'm, gonna, I'm in the first quadrant. I'm gonna immediately draw a right triangle just like I did on the other one. And tangent is also known as y over x. So just like what we did with the four thirds, y over x is gonna be equal to this x over one. Now, be careful, these two x's are not the same thing. They should have used a different variable, they didn't. Okay, and that's the reason I'm going through it with you now. I just want you to be prepared when you see it on your homework. All right, so y over x is equal to this value. The y here is that x, and this x right here is that one. Notice that we were doing the exact same setup as what we did in example eight, right? Everything, every step has been exactly the same. Now, what did we do? at this point. What's missing? And what do we need to do? Yeah, yeah, Pythagorean theorem. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. All right. Hypotenuse or radius or c, I don't care. Whatever, it doesn't matter. So you're just solving for it, right? So we gotta solve for, in this case, the radius so we can take the square root. So I'm gonna rearrange that uh, cumulative property. I can change the order. So the hypotenuse is the square root of x squared plus one. Please don't take the square root of each of these pieces. Don't ever take individual square roots um, or just any roots of parts when there's plus and minus signs in there. You can do that in uh, multiplication division. You can't do that with addition and subtraction. 
Yeah, I, I saw that on the on the quiz a lot. Okay, so that goes right here. X squared plus one is my hypotenuse. And then the last thing we did was we answered our question. What's the sine value? Again, sine is not just y when your radius is different than one. Sine is what? Opposite, so here's where we are. Opposite is x over the hypotenuse. And typically we'd rationalize that, but we're not gonna make you do that on this stuff. We just get, just get it set up. And that would be your answer. And that's all they wanted. They wanted you to solve this for, um, and get it in terms of x. Again, they should have used a different letter. All right, so try to do as much of this as you can. I'll answer some questions tomorrow, and then uh, uh, we'll do, um, I'm going to add to this tomorrow. So try to figure this out tonight so that tomorrow's is a little bit easier. All right. So you're on page, I think, 506. And let me verify the values and numbers here. That would be, oh, I said three on Google Classroom. It's five. Um, five through 37. <laughs> five through 37. I'm pretty sure I said on Google Classroom uh, three to 39. You're going to do 39 tomorrow anyway, so it doesn't matter. And doing number three isn't going to hurt you either. Uh, but you, you can just do this for tonight, okay? All right. Okay. Kelsey, do you need a regular?